And since the average consumer at the time was a 12-year-old full-grown adult male who worked in a coal mine, it was perfect. What's up guys, James here with Fun Fact of the Day. Hope you guys are having a great day, learning lots, and getting stuff done. Today, we are here to talk about the interesting history of genes and all the random little things that went into genes that most people probably don't actually know. Let's start with the origin of the word gene. Basically, genes have actually been around since about the 17th century, but they didn't necessarily mean what they do now. Back then, gene was kind of a catch-all term for rough clothing worn by men. And over the years, this kind of evolved. The reason that they're actually called genes in the first place is because for years and years and years and years and years, the only place they were made was in Genoa, Italy. And if you get rid of the Oa, you're just left with gene, like gene Oa. Denim actually has an extremely similar naming history as well, because they came from the Nîmes area in France, and in France, if you say D-Nîmes, it just becomes denim, which was basically at the time kind of a knockoff version of the jeans that were made in Italy. So, are we basically just wearing the exact same jeans the people in the 1600s are wearing? Of course not! We are innovators. If you look down at your jeans right now, you will notice a bunch of tiny little metal things on them that burn you when you take them out of the dryer. That, my friends, is called innovation. And it is one of the main differences between the jeans back then and the jeans we have now. Man, those 1600ers were pretty dumb compared to us, huh? These wonderful little hand-burning devices were created by a man named Jacob Davis back in the mid 1800s. You see, the story goes that his job used to be to make clothes for all of the gold miners and foresters in the area of Nevada in which he lived. And one of the wives of these people basically said, hey, I will literally give you my arm and my leg if you will teach me how to make these pockets stop tearing off. You need to fix this problem. It's annoying. I'm tired of sewing them back on. And you'll notice, if you ever go back and look at old pockets in paintings of people, they will have torn off and be like hanging loose. So he went to his workshop and noticed that on the saddle of his horse saddle, it had rivets all over it holding it together. And that never broke. So he decided, all right, I'm going to put rivets on all the areas of the pants that tear regularly, which usually is the edges of the pockets and sometimes near the fly, and then he won't have any problems with them tearing. So he did just that, and it worked amazingly. He started selling out of pants for miles and miles and miles. People would actually come from other towns to buy his pants. And so, being the smart but illiterate 1800s person that he was, he decided to try and file a patent. Unfortunately for him, there was a $68 paywall between him and that patent, and even though he had recently become quite successful, $68 was a lot of money at the time. So he reached out to his good old friend and supplier, you might have heard of this man before, Levi Strauss. That's right. His supplier of jean material was Levi Strauss, and he knew that Levi had a lot of money. So he said, hey, I have this amazing idea. And he said it in a much worse way than that. I'll put the thing right here so you can see. But basically he said, I have this great idea and I need to patent it. How can you help me? Let's be partners. So obviously he lost the naming end of that partnership because the current jeans are called Levi Strauss jeans. But one way or the other, they ended up patenting it and selling it in a mass market. They made tons of money and it turned out great. They started selling two different types of jeans, one in a denim material and another one in duck canvas. Duck canvas is essentially a really, really thick canvas material that you would have seen in old canvas tarps or like a canvas tent or maybe even a wagon cover, something really rough. And the problem with it is, it's so stiff and so rough that it never gets soft over time like denim does. You know, when you wear jeans for a while and they start getting really soft, duck canvas never quite did that. So the jeans, the denim jeans that you and I have both learned to love, 
They took off, but the duck canvas jeans flopped and they stopped selling them. So now that we have these amazing pants that don't feel like burlap sacks on our legs, let's talk real quick about why they are just the way they are. For example, why are they blue? Well, they're blue because indigo dye was actually the cheapest and most readily available color in the United States at the time, so that's what they bought. And they bought a lot of it. But the cheap skatiness doesn't just stop there. Have you noticed that the inside of your jeans is much lighter and non-dyed compared to the outside of your jeans? Well, the benefit to that, of course, is that your legs don't turn blue from the dye when you first start wearing them, which was a big problem with a lot of pants back in the day. They thought of this by saving money. Essentially, they didn't want to use so much ink on these jeans, so they only inked the top layer just enough so that it wouldn't sink all the way through. And that is the reason that we have these great jeans that slowly fade over time and, of course, don't turn our legs blue. So, on top of our legs not looking like an avatar every single time we put the pants on, the blue dye also served the double purpose of not showing any stains. You see, if you wear black pants and you get anything light on them at all, it shows up. And if you wear any sort of light khaki pants, everything black shows up. But the dark blue dye mixed with the white cotton made for the perfect blend of color to not show any stains. And since the average consumer at the time was a 12-year-old full-grown adult male who worked in a coal mine, it was perfect and it took off like crazy. And at first, of course, it was only a workman's pant and, you know, more rich, up-class folk didn't want to wear it. But throughout the 40s and 50s, it was shown as the rebel pant in most movies and pop culture. And then everybody wanted some jeans because they wanted to be cool. And that continued all the way through the 80s, 90s, and 2000s until now, where jeans, at least for women, have regressed to painted on spandex with no rivets. Basically, we're back to the 1600s, but softer. If you enjoyed this video at all and you want to learn more about everything in the whole wide world, click the link right here. I will have a whole playlist full of even better videos just for you. And like and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel out, and I appreciate it personally. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next day or two.